with a previous exercise, we exposed a couple of potentially critical threat activities. We still need to validate and scope the exact impact from these threats. In this exercise, we will show you how to simplify the validation and analysis process. Typically, this process can be cumbersome, but using Splunk's search analysis workflow, you can quickly find evidence of threats. To demonstrate, we will continue to investigate the host 10.1.21.153, which attempted access to multiple web servers and a critical database server in our previous exercise. We will be looking at how was this workstation attempting to gain access. In the analysis table, we can look in the source row for IP 10.1.21.153. From there, we can click, then pivot into a new search for password failure events for the selected host. Within our search results, Splunk allows for further analysis by providing drill down capabilities that provide full context for the analysis. Notice we added the source IP address for 10.1.21.153 as an additional search condition, resulting in a focus search with all failed password activity from that workstation. The result of this drill down search shows actual raw events from different web servers interacting with this workstation. These activities serve as our evidence. Next, visualize the searched events for the 10.1.21.153 host that would help quickly give an analyst an understanding of how the attempts to access internal service servers were carried out. The destination field tells us which systems this particular workstation is targeting and the aggregate number of failed login attempts, showing Cloud Web Server 03 as our top targeted host with the most failed access attempts. It also looks like our database 001 server, which is a critical asset, has been targeted. By selecting the report option as top values by time, we can quickly visualize where the 10.1.21.153 workstation has attempted and failed to access destination hosts. The default visualization shows the activities visualized in a line chart. The visualization properties can be adjusted to show activities by separating each destination host. Right above the visualization chart, find the line chart and change the visualization option to column bar graph. This changes the chart type to column, so the volume of events can be easily distinguished. Next, select Format and move Multi-Series Mode to Yes. By changing Multi-Series Mode to Yes, we are splitting the bar chart into each destination host identity. In our visualization, we can now clearly see the volume of activities broken down by targeted host, where we see the amount of activities over time. The sequence of the actions by the attacker in the order of login attempts as they were carried out relative to different assets, and the interval and duration of activities that shows a series of attempts after another group of activities carried out by the same attacker. To recap, first we saw a series of brute force activities to multiple web service hosts in a random fashion between cloud web servers 01 through 07. The attacks to these servers were carried out in two different intervals. After the first series of attempts, the same series of attacks repeated eight minutes later. Immediately after the first series of web server access attempts, the attacker attempted to access a more critical asset, our database server. Note access to the database server was only attempted after the web servers were probed. Now we have a clear understanding of what is going on in the network and how the failed login attempts were likely initiated by a malware infected host probing our internal network. Through this demonstration, we have seen how Splunk can easily drill into detailed analysis and validate specific suspicious activities by visualizing aggregated stats into interactive charts. This completes the validation section of the basic security investigation workflow with Splunk. Next, we will further scope the impact of this attack by verifying the exact actions the attacker has carried out. Stay tuned.